Okay, this is Hurricane Andre on June 1st, 2015. It was a Category 4 when this was filmed. And you'll notice on the right side of the eye, there's this strange uh, arch shape. And it, it's not there at daybreak. Right here we have daybreak. It's not there. Then about an hour later it shows up with concentric rings on the back side of it, to the left. And it stays there for five hours until this video ends. I mean, so it stayed there stationary more than five hours. So I'm going to explain the physics of how the ionospheric heaters can uh, produce this. This is a big screw up for the harp operators, as usual. But uh, it was about a day later that this Category 4 hurricane suddenly blew apart and stopped rotating. So let me go through some slides that I put together. Sorry, that's not right. Here we go. Here's some slides I put together to explain this. <clears throat> what we're looking at in that previous video is the uh, cloud shield on the top of all these rain bands. And we'll get back to this structure in a minute. But the main thing is in the eye wall you have warm, warm air spinning around and rising. But in the center, to form this clear area, you have dry cold air being pulled down the center. So what is happening in the ionosphere to allow this control to take place? Uh, the ionospheric heaters use this D layer in the ionosphere. Notice it only forms in the daytime when the sun is up. At nighttime, it disappears completely. So at nighttime, the ionosphere is 170 miles up, and the Ionospheric heaters cannot control the jet stream with that being so high up. But in the daytime, it's only 30 miles up. So here's a look at the hardware that's actually working out in the Pacific to destroy hurricanes and push uh, warm air into the Arctic. This is the SBX-1 main transmitter unit. And off on the left here, you can see it's not a little doll or Barbie figure. It's a grown man. This is a really huge terrible piece of hardware. That giant uh, flat plate array transmitter is placed inside of a fabric radome and this is a picture during assembly inside the radome. Each one of these little wedges is a transmit receive module which transmits about 200 watts. <clears throat> so there are 45,000 transmit receive modules and this uh, antenna can detect an object the size of a baseball at a range of 2,500 miles. That is why I say this thing can project all that power into a pinpoint beam. Totally computer controlled. Uh, the dome is 120 foot diameter. It's a PVC transmit transparent to microwaves. The power source is six 3.6 megawatt generators for a total of almost 22 megawatts. And this uh, harp platform has a tow ship to move it around. So that 22 megawatts is not actually designed to go into the engines. That is designed to go into the transmitter unit. Uh, other U.S. Navy ships have powerful microwave transmitters. This is the U.S. Navy ship Howard O. Lorenzen. It looks small, but it's actually 534 feet long. Each phased array, the boxes on the top of the deck, uh, is a phased array transmitter. Synthetic aperture radar, whatever you want to call it, weighs 250 tons. And there's a crew of 88 on board. This is a gigantic ionospheric heater again in a different format. How do the ionospheric heaters affect the jet stream? Okay, the purple layer represents the, uh, the purple band represents the D layer of the ionosphere. And at the bottom we have the uh, Missile Defense Agency, SBX again, SBX-1. I suppose they're going to build a bunch more. And <coughs> this 10 to 20 million watt microwave beam is projected up into the D layer of the ionosphere 
to rapidly heat an oval or an arch shape. And it's computer controlled, it moves instantaneously. So what happens with this heated arch, this heated uh, arch or oval? Low pressure gas in the D layer is heated from freezing to thousands of degrees in a few seconds. That expansion happens in all directions. But in the center, a smoke ring, or toroidal vortex, of superheated gas or plasma is ejected from the center. Smoke ring of plasma is driven down from the D layer at 50 kilometers, or 30 miles, <coughs> into the jet stream at 12 kilometers. By heating the plasma behind the ring, they can drive it downward into the top of the troposphere or the jet stream. So how does all of that explain the satellite video or the strange arch that sat there next to a category 4 hurricane eye? Here's a simplified view of a hurricane showing air inflow at the top. And again here's a cross section of the hurricane and simplified view Notice the outside edge of the hurricane is actually rising up and it's lower towards the center and higher towards the outside. That's important in a minute. Invisible cool dry air flows inward to create the uh, clear eye. Now imagine this plasmoid ring. A plasmoid is a uh, spinning ball of plasma. In this case it's the shape of a smoke ring. Imagine this plasmoid ring is descending down to the top of the hurricane. And there is a descending air current behind it. The ring spreads out due to the column of falling air behind it. The next ring arrives a few minutes, a few seconds later, we really don't know. <coughs> the ring spreads out more. And again, we have uh, the left, on the left side, the ring is going to uh, go off screen because the diameter increases. Now the roll cloud is held stationary for five hours or more actually, between the moving layers of air and only during the daylight. Because at the outside of the hurricane, the cloud shield, you have a fast wind because of this rising point here. It creates a venturi. So this is fast wind and this is slow wind. That traps this roll cloud and holds it there for hours on end. This is the explanation for the stationary roll cloud on the high resolution satellite video. <clears throat> so it is a fact that ionospheric heaters can control the jet stream and they have enough power to break up a hurricane. That's the good news. The bad news is that every time the ionospheric heaters are used to control the jet stream, they punch a hole in the ozone layer, letting deadly UVB reach the surface, killing all plants and animals, and especially plankton, which is the base of the Pacific Ocean food chain. Ionospheric heaters are killing the Pacific and will soon kill the entire planet by melting the Arctic, which will release enough methane to cause a doomsday heating of the entire planet. This representation of the lower atmosphere with the green, green area showing <clears throat> representing the ozone layer and the red arrow in the center is the D layer <coughs> bottom of the ionosphere. On the right side we have a heated ring of plasma just created by the SBX and the other Navy ships and they drive this heat, heated toroid of plasma down through the ozone layer into the troposphere so they can control the weather, create drought, whatever they want to do. What does this do to the ozone layer? It allows deadly ultraviolet B to penetrate to the surface, in this case the Pacific, where it instantly kills uh, phytoplankton and zooplankton, the base of the food chain. Uh, just to show for the meteorologists how much wind shear there was when this video happened, um, this is the uh, wind shear. The yellow lines are the pressure lines in the jet stream, 
and the uh, white arrows are the winds. So this area right here, I'm going to use a pointer instead, this is the red means category 4 on June 1st. So this is when this video was taken. Notice there's no actual wind here. Um, it's very light and it's from the south. So how do you get an arch on the northeast corner when this uh, arch was, uh, the wind is actually from the south? The night of June 1st, or actually before the video, the storm strengthens at night when the ionospheric heaters cannot press descending air down on top. And uh, one of the last things I want to point out is this is the sea surface temperature. And again, we can see here June 1st, it was category 4. And uh, so there is a slight cooling of the, of the ocean water. We have uh, the brown is uh, 28 degrees centigrade, and then it went to yellow, which is 27. But the main point I want to make is that the rotation stopped. So I need to go back to this one, and we'll just have a look. This is the entire history of the eye in water vapor mode. And let me go ahead and read out the dates to you now. Okay, we start here. May 28th, it's trying to organize. May 29th, it's getting organized. The harp downburst starts about now, actually. May 31st, June 1st, Category 4, June 2nd, it's completely broken up. June 3rd, and it's gone. Okay, one more time. May 28th, May 29th, May 30th, May 31, June 1st, June 2nd, and it's broken up. Alright, let me switch to uh, water vapor satellite mode and show you. <clears throat> this is June 4th, and sorry I missed June 2nd and 3rd, my PC locked up. Let's zoom in and see what it looked on June 4th. You can see where is the counterclockwise rotation? You know, two days, three days earlier, this was category four. And uh, no wind shear, and the water temperature has only dropped a couple of degrees, and yet it has totally stopped rotating. And we'll go uh, look at June 4th. This is later on June 4th. Look at that. That is amazing. And. June 5th, and again, there's a thing called conservation of angular momentum. All that spinning uh, momentum had to go somewhere because it's gone. And my theory is that the, con the uh, counterclockwise rotation is canceled by the clockwise rotation of the descending air. And just a last one to show you. June 5th, very odd appearance. Very odd. And Mother Nature is trying to spin it back up because the water is so warm. And you can see on the left side here some counterclockwise rotation here. But over here it's all clockwise. So this is what I wanted to show that this is the main reason why the Pacific is dying. Of course the Fukushima radiation is a big factor. But by destroying the base of the food chain, they have uh, caused the death of the Pacific. But the worst thing is that these ionospheric heaters are being used to press warm uh, air into Alaska for the last two winters and summertime as well. If this continues, it's a 100% death sentence for the entire planet. I hope everybody can uh, appreciate that and maybe try to do whatever you can to stop it. Thank you very much for watching.